Hey, what's up guys? Nadia and Sans here back for another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. So in the past, a lot of you have asked me for PewDiePie editing tutorials or like meme editing tutorials. So today we're gonna take a look at a bunch of effects that PewDiePie uses in his videos in order to make them good. Someone is trying hard. <laughs> Hell. Wait, you can't just sample one of my videos as your intro. I will say I am a fan of his videos. They're pretty funny, they're well thought out, and the editing is actually pretty good. So after watching a bunch of his videos, I've pretty much narrowed it down to six main things you need to concentrate on if you're gonna make a video in the style of PewDiePie. Number one is gonna be your zooms, and you're gonna have to follow the subject in frame. And you will find out. <laughs> it's a close one. Number two is gonna be adding reverb to your track so you can make them <gasps> more dramatic. Cute. Because it's a bit weird one, isn't it? Number three is going to be the classic PewDiePie twist what face. Hmm. Number four, using the puppet tool in After Effects to do stuff like this. Number five is going to be a series of blend modes so you can overlay different types of footage. Congrats to me, everybody. And finally, number six, I hate to use this term, but ear rape, I guess is the only way to describe it, where you make a funny joke or remark and then music comes in and it's like super gained out and it sounds like garbage. <laughs> Okay, this person is insane. So to me, those six things really define the PewDiePie video editing style. He also uses a lot of jump cuts, a lot of black and white, a lot of color effects. But for today, we're gonna focus on those main six things so that you can go out and edit a video inspired by PewDiePie. We are gonna be working in both Premiere and After Effects today, so make sure you have both those programs installed, open them up, because we're getting started. All right, guys, we're jumping into Adobe Premiere first, and the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the zoom effect. So basically, what you're gonna wanna do is locate the point in the video where you want the zoom to start. Number one is gonna be your zoom. So right when I say zoom, that looks like a good place to me. So I'm gonna click on this clip, come up to effect controls, and I'm going to set a position, scale, and rotation keyframe for this video. Zoom. And right there, I'm just gonna zoom in super quick, and I'm gonna zoom it in on my face, and I'm just going to manually position this in the center of the frame. And because I'm not using rotation yet, you're gonna wanna to remember to also add a rotation keyframe at the end of this until we get to the rotation section, which is happening just after this. So let's keep going. So right about here is where I actually start to move my head. So I'm actually gonna set all three and I'm gonna maybe just move this over slightly so there's a little bit of movement. And then I'm gonna to go to where I end the rotation, which is right there. I'm going to rotate it so it's right side up. And I'm basically just gonna position this in frame. And you're gonna wanna watch out for these little black corners. You're gonna wanna try to avoid those as much as possible. When you rotate this much, it's gonna be kind of hard to avoid. So what you'll wanna do is just move the position up kind of like that to get rid of the black frame in the corner. So let's keep going. All right, so I'm like moving over to the left side of the frame. So we'll just move this over. And as you can see, black frame up here in the corner. So we'll just scale up to get rid of that. We'll maybe move it up just a bit. Set a rotation keyframe so we have all three. So now I'm rotating to the other side. So finish the rotation right about there. And we will put me right in the center. Again, avoiding black in the corner. So we'll just move this up a bit. This is a little extreme. He never goes this extreme, but I'm just showing you guys exactly kind of the, the process that you would want to follow if you're going to do something like this. And then I'm ending back at center. So I know that I can put this to a zero rotation here. And I will center myself up in frame like that. So now let's check out what we've got. Number one is going to be your zooms and you're going to have to follow the subject in frame. So if you guys watch PewDiePie's videos, you'll know that he does this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, it may not be as extreme as doing the actual head rotation follow kind of thing, but what he for sure does a lot is just the single zoom like this. So at the very least, you're gonna wanna do these kinds of zooms. The closer the keyframes are together, the faster the zoom is gonna be. So I can move these over even closer to each other and it will actually be significantly faster. Next, we're gonna move on to the audio reverb track. And if you guys have seen my previous video on the audio reverb track and audio effects in Premiere, this is a super powerful tool. And if you guys don't know about it, today's gonna to change your life and it's gonna be awesome. So I have this audio that I want to add a reverb to. So what I'm gonna do is just click on the audio here, hold down Alt and drag it to another track. So for this, we're gonna put it on audio four just so we have a little bit of space in between our normal audio and our reverb audio. And then what we're gonna do is come up here to window and turn on the audio track mixer, which will bring up this new panel in Premiere. And then we're gonna come over to this little tiny arrow in the top left, and we're gonna to tool that down. And on audio four, which is right here, we're gonna click on this little arrow in the effects selection, and we're going to choose reverb, studio reverb. And we're gonna double click on studio reverb. And here you have a bunch of different options that you can choose for your reverb. What I find that works the best for me, at least, is setting the room size to 88, setting this decay to 8,000, which is how long the reverb will last. We're gonna set our early reflections to 55, our width to 55, leave all of these the same, and then down here is very important, your dry and wet level. So we're gonna turn our dry down to zero and our wet level up to 100. Now, 
The reason that we're keeping dry at zero is because we're keeping the original audio signal here, and then this is going to be our wet or affected signal just down here. So if I mute this bottom track here and I just play the dry signal. <gasps> More dramatic. That, that's, that's all you get. But now let's add in the wet signal and see what it sounds like. <gasps> More dramatic. So the reason that we're using the audio track mixer instead of dragging an effect onto a single clip is that the audio track mixer will actually extend the audio effect past when the audio stops. In the past, some of you may have tried to drag a reverb onto an audio clip, but then the reverb ends as soon as the audio clip ends. And the whole point of having reverb is for it to extend past the end of the audio because that's what reverb is. So the audio track mixer will affect every piece of audio that's on that track. So if you're doing 10 different reverb effects in your video, you're gonna wanna drop all 10 of those audio tracks onto track four or or whatever your reverb track is. And then that way they'll all sound the same. They'll all be great. They'll all last past the audio and it's just great. I, I don't know what to tell you. Moving on to the twist effect. Now we are going to jump over into After Effects for this, ladies and gentlemen. And what I like to do is just duplicate my video clip that we're gonna be bringing over in After Effects by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging on top of itself. And then simply highlighting the video and the audio. And we're gonna right click on this and go to replace with After Effects composition. And what that will do is it will transfer the clip over to After Effects along with the audio. So now we can start affecting this video. And the reason that we duplicated it in Premiere is because I want to retain the original video file just in case I don't like what we're doing in After Effects. So you at least have the option to go back if you want. But let's move over into After Effects. So right about there where I start to say twist, what we're gonna do is come up over to our effects and presets and we're just gonna type in twirl. And under the distort twirl effect, we're gonna just drop that right on our video. And then over here in the effect controls, you'll see a couple different options. So what we're gonna do is first work on the twirl center. So we're gonna turn on the keyframe for twirl center and it will put a little center right where you want the twirl effect to start. So what we're gonna do is actually put that right on the tip of my nose and I'm gonna click on my video here, hit U on the keyboard to show our animated parameters. And I'm just gonna go down a couple frames and just make sure that the center of the twist is staying on my nose the whole time. And this doesn't have to be an exact science. Like this can be a little loose. It doesn't have to be super, super precise. So now we wanna actually find out where we want our twist to start. So as I start to turn my head and say twist what face, I think we're gonna have it start right here. And if we just come up over here to our effect controls, if I turn the angle a different way, you'll see that we're already starting to get that effect. And then right underneath that, the radius is how big or small the effect is. So the higher the radius, the more the frame will twirl. But since we wanna keep this to just my face, we'll set the radius to uh, 14 looks pretty good. So because I want the twirl to start here, I'm gonna set the angle keyframe and then we're gonna find out where we want it to end, which is right about here. I'm gonna click on my video track, hit U twice on the keyboard, which will bring up our animated parameters again. And I'm just going to set another keyframe here for the angle. I'm gonna go back to the first keyframe by hitting this little arrow to the left, and I'm gonna set the angle to zero. So now as you see, it's animating from zero to 94 in the span of a couple keyframes. So now what we have- PewDiePie twist what face? So now we have that classic little twisty face that we just did ourselves. And then if we wanna combine something from the first lesson, what we can do is just simply highlight both of these, shift command C to pre-compose them into one layer. And I'm gonna set a scale keyframe here. And I'm just going to scale in on it. And maybe we'll also set a position keyframe here and a position keyframe here and just move this down just a bit. So now we're combining the zoom and the twist into one. PewDiePie twist what face? So then if we go back into Premiere, we have our After Effects composition right here and it's doing exactly what we did in After Effects, but now it's just mirrored in Premiere and that's, you know, Adobe Dynamic Link. What can I say? It's great. Moving on to the puppet warp effect. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna duplicate this on top of itself, right click and go to replace with After Effects composition and then open up After Effects and it should bring that clip in. And what we're gonna use now is the puppet effect tool. And I don't know if you guys have ever used this before, but it's this little pin up here, this little push pin icon. So what we're gonna do is make a couple points first where we want to animate. So what I wanna do is animate my eyebrows and my mouth. So I'm gonna make a couple points here, just around my mouth something like that. And then we're gonna do my eyebrows, something like that. So basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is pin the things that you wanna animate first. And then after you're done pinning, you're just gonna to wanna to quickly go around the outside of your subject with the push pin, because this is gonna make sure that only the inside part of the head is gonna be warped and the rest of your frame is gonna stay the same. So now that we have that, it automatically sets a keyframe every time you add one of these pins. So what we're gonna do is just kinda of go down here where I want the effect to end. And I'm just gonna start grabbing these pins that I want to actually warp. <laughs> that, is, that is terrifying. 
But if we go back and play this through, it's warping and animating different parts of my face in the classic meme style of PewDiePie. He does this a lot for his thumbnails. He also does it in his videos occasionally, but this is how you do it using the puppet pin tool. And again, if we wanted to pre-compose this layer, shift command C, what we can do is set a scale and position keyframe right here at the beginning, set a scale and position keyframe down here at the end and just do a nice little zoom in. So once you guys have it looking the way that you like, we can just pop back over into Adobe Premiere. And again, the Adobe Dynamic Link composition is there and now it is in our Premiere timeline. And of course we have retained the original video just in case we don't like what we did here. Moving on next is going to be blend mode. So basically a blend mode is just a different way to blend footage with other footage or images with other images on top of itself. And it does a variety of different things based on the blend mode that you choose. And it's mostly based on opacity. So if we just duplicate this on top of itself and I'm gonna just scale this up like this and just move me over to the frame over here. And then down here under opacity, under blend mode, if you tool down this little menu, you have a bunch of different options that you can choose from. And they're separated by lines. So all the different ones inside of each line segment will kind of do similar things, but slightly different. So all of these up here will darken the footage on top of the footage that's underneath it. All of these will do the opposite. It will lighten. Uh, PewDiePie uses this one a lot, I think. All of these down here will do like various things with lighting. Difference is kind of like your film negative stuff. Uh, same with exclusion. And you can also do some like hue and saturation. So definitely play around with all of these different blend modes and see how it works for you. But like if we go to lighten, for example, we can just fade this one in on top of the other video, just like this. So you can overlay different types of footage. So now this top one is coming in and what we can do is actually animate the scale and position of this guy down here on the bottom. We'll maybe scale me up a little bit and we'll move me over to the side of the frame. So now we have something like this. So you can overlay different types of footage. And then if you wanted to, you can do the reverb audio thing that we did earlier. And now you're pairing three different lessons into one single clip. It all makes sense together. I hope you understand by now. And moving on to the audio ear rape section. Hate that word, let's keep going. Down here, I've got some sound effects of a crowd cheering. But what I want this to do is be gained out and sound like absolute garbage. So I'll drag that down onto my timeline right underneath where I want the audio to start. And simply, let's uh, expand this so you can see what we're doing to the audio here. By right clicking and going to audio gain, we're gonna boost the gain by 30 decibels, which is a lot. And watch what's gonna happen to the waveform. Check this out, it's gonna turn into a stick of butter. Normal, stick of butter, can't even see the waveform anymore. And if we play this, mind your ears kids, it's gonna be loud. <laughs> Uh, basically, we don't want to blow people's eardrums out at this point, so we're going to lower the volume of the audio. Now that it's all gained out and sounding like absolute garbage, we can lower it down to a respectable level. So you're going to want it to peak a little bit, but not a lot. And you can uh, damage speakers, you can damage people's hearing by going too loud on this. Guys, this is actually kind of a serious thing. Don't go too loud and don't have your audio be really super quiet and then blow it up with crazy gain. You're going to freak people out and they're going to be really upset with you, especially if they're wearing headphones. So please, please, please be careful of this. It, it can do some serious damage, honestly. Well, we learned a lot in this video. That's for damn sure. We learned how to do the zoom. We learned how to do the audio reverb. We learned how to do the twist face. We learned how to do the puppet warp. We learned how to do different blend modes. And we also learned the audio ear thing that I won't mention audio effect. A lot to consider, a lot to ponder. Wow, what a great video. So guys, if you're going out there, you're trying to make a PewDiePie inspired edit. Hopefully you learned some good stuff today. I taught you, you learned. This is how this relationship works. It learned how to edit stuff. Go out there and rip off the style of PewDiePie and don't tell him that I told you. Because the last thing I want is to end up in a PewDiePie video where he roasts me for 15 minutes. All right, everybody, that was pretty good. Or maybe I do want that because any publicity is good publicity. That about does it for me today, guys. My name is Nadia Sands. This is Learn How to Edit Stuff. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Follow me on social media at Nadia Sands. Hit me up with any editing questions or if you want to do a tutorial, let me know. I'll try to make it for you. Subscribe, check out the last video that you missed, and I will see you next time.